Okay, very good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. It's Wednesday the 18th of December. Um, quick heads up, Sam is doing the big fat Christmas market quiz. Uh, something we do here at Amplify Trading every year. Bit of fun, but these are all market related questions and uh, unfortunately I can't take part because I've actually seen and contributed to some of the questions. Uh, but I won't unveil yet what some of the big prizes are but everyone's invited to take part so three o'clock london time sam will come on he'll he'll run a live feed via our youtube channel uh, so if you want a chance to to take part and test your knowledge about everything that's happened in markets over the last 12 months it's going to be a good one so so join us then all you need to do is subscribe to the channel uh, hit the bell icon and you'll get notified when we begin uh, otherwise just starting with the briefing is actually not too much for me to comment on. So there's not really any new updates on uh, Brexit related headlines. Uh, there's nothing really going on with US China trade wars at the moment. They're probably the two hottest themes of the last week or so. Uh, but there is some significant equity stories, whether it's a merger agreement in the automotive sector or one of the key bellwethers in the US, FedEx, having a profit warning last night. There are a couple of stories I can fill you in on. Uh, but looking at the cross asset class mix this morning, it's very much reflective of have I, as I've just mentioned, it's pretty quiet overall. Uh, the dollar index said maybe a touch stronger, but only one tenth of a percent, pretty sideways for the currency markets at the moment. Um, in terms of the British pound stabilizing, I was just going to go back and look at briefly that chart we had yesterday marked up. And uh, you can see that from when we delivered the briefing, Yesterday was just about when we had the gap fill from the closing of price before the spike up on the election result. If we're looking at the sterling futures contract here, um, but we continue to drift south yesterday as markets have to price in this renewed risk of a no deal, of course. Um, otherwise, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, equity index futures pretty quiet. Oil um, hugging the pivot, albeit down 40 cents. A uh, bit of a pop lower in WTI crude last night. You can see that that bigger red candle. These are 30 minute candlesticks there. Uh, the price moving down by around 40 cents or so uh, yesterday evening. And of course, we had the API all inventories released and I can get you up to speed as well with those numbers. So let's jump straight into the, the headlines. And this is one of the first things I wanted to mention because it's like to get a lot of airplay. It's kind of the main story that people are running given the fairly quiet macro um, developments at the moment. So Fiat Chrysler and Peugeot agree to merge in giant auto deal. Um, so apparently they've struck a merger pact that would create the world's fourth largest car maker by output with combined revenues of approximately 170 billion euros. The transaction expected to complete within 12 to 15 months subject to shareholder approval and then of course regulatory clearances but this doesn't make them in terms of the actual combined size um, one of the largest car makers in the world there's they, they still wouldn't rank near the top in that respect combined revenues though would be would be decent um, opening calls in terms of the cash market just having a quick look Peugeot shares were called up about five percent ahead of the open uh, so some pretty decent gains for the for the French car maker. Fiat Chrysler up about two percent at the open uh, as well. One thing I was just looking at and, and talking about um, the auto manufacturers was I was just updating a few crib sheets uh, in regards to the equity indices, and I was just having a look at the DAX uh, composition. And obviously, automakers in Germany uh, have suffered greatly under a kind of a, a combination of protectionism coming out of the US, specifically targeting tariffs on the likes of BMW, Volkswagen, Daimler and so on. Uh, but also, you remember, we had China just a few days ago coming out saying they could also retaliate if the German government was to ban Huawei's 5G network. Uh, and obviously the way to hurt Germany, or at least to threaten them in that type of situation, is to target the car makers, given as well they're such an export heavy nation uh, and last time I looked at this sector allocation of the DAX obviously the automobile sector was top uh, combining those big three automakers although individually not the largest companies collectively was the largest 
piece of the pie here that you can see on the left hand side however what a difference a couple of months makes and given the multiple profit warnings we've had from a lot of these German automotive names including lots of different um, regulatory issues that they've had compliance issues with the emission side as well over the years and the automobile sector now is just ranking all the way down at fifth spot um, below pharma software insurance and chemicals so yeah definitely quite interesting to see how quickly the the tide can turn there and the underlying composition of course of these indices uh, can alter the other company that i thought was worth mentioning is fedex now if any of those new to markets it's not the fedex is a particularly large company um, but it is often seen as a bit of a what they call or classify as a bellwether that meaning that the frequency of the use of the company services to deliver goods would be reflective then of consumers purchasing of, of say gifts to then use FedEx to send or consumers buying uh, goods for themselves so the weaker their business then the weaker it would reflect on the overall economic environment and as you can see here from the, the title, they've slid after their second profit warning. Uh, so it's the second time in three months, in fact, that they've cut their annual earnings guidance. They've cited, as you can see, a weak economy, higher costs, and also loss of delivery deal with Amazon. Uh, Amazon, of course, just looking to take everything in-house, be the giant conglomerate that they are not utilizing anymore the uses of the lights of FedEx which is a big blow for them as well so uh, aftermarket last night when this news broke their shares were down about six percent so yeah if you're looking for other signs as to think about are we nearing a bit of a top for this equity run uh, another thing of course that that people talk about at this time of year and let's just let's just have a quick look at the S&P at the moment uh, perhaps put it on a 240 so we can look at a bit of a longer time frame. I mean, just looking where we are at the moment, I would say it's going to be pretty tough going for us to break the all time high now. Uh, having established that above the 3200 level uh, only within the last week, or in fact, <laughs> yesterday, um, fresh catalysts to really push us higher again given the proximity of Christmas in year end uh, I think is is limited so obviously these things are not impossible but uh, I, would, I would say we need something surprisingly positive to, to come out um, the one thing as well that will probably help the consolidation if anything of perhaps the equity move uh, this you know solid gain that we've had more recently through December in the recovery throughout the month um, is that obviously Trump will want to deliver uh, a little Christmas present, uh, not just in terms of for markets, but for the consumer to validate that his policies are in fact working by just connecting that to the height of the stock market. Um, that's his kind of political way of just going about his business. Uh, the other things with Trump, as we discussed yesterday, the House is looking like they are going to impeach the president, but as I said, I don't really see that as a risk to price at this point and I think that's reflected uh, in the, the fact that everyone knows he's going to get impeached by the House it's not going to pass the Senate and so therefore you know if this was going to be a market moving piece of information it, it already would have done so and it hasn't so um, and again the likelihood of, of actual removal from the White House is minimal if not non-existent so I wouldn't get too worried about that. So all in all, whether or not we consolidate in this 3192 to 3203 until the end of the year, perhaps we see a pullback. And if we did, then, you know, you've got good areas now technically where the S&P is likely to, to find some decent support. But all in all, even if we did pull back a percent um, or so, I don't think that that's anything to get too worried about. And I think now we just see out the year. And if I was looking a little bit more conservative for a range 59.50 up into towards where we are at the moment would probably be the, the kind of price area I'd be looking at. Um, talking of Brexit, uh, as I said, the pound was continuing to come down yesterday. So, I mean, let's just have a look from a percentage point of view um, how far we've gone from the actual peak of the actual election night to the low of yesterday 
we've now come off about three and a quarter percent for cable. Uh, as this becomes a little bit more of a distinct reality now of where are we heading given the uh, shift in the toughness on the Brexit legislation that Boris is going to look to push through in the WAB at the end of the week. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in, in all detail. What I'll do is I'll just pop it in the chat room. I did share it on my, my Twitter account as well if you wanted to have a look at this graphic. But I guess just summarising uh, a couple of the options and the decisions that need to be made going forward and the respective time frames as well in order for that to happen. Um, otherwise, elsewhere, let's just have a look at WCI crude. I did say and show you that the price dropped overnight. This comes as you can see here. The headline crude figure showed a build of 4.7 million. Expectations were for a drawdown of 1.5. Um, so after four days of gains, uh, the report shows U.S. stockpiles are swelling once again. Uh, Cushing were, was a drawdown of about 300,000. Gasoline a build of 5.6 million. Distillers a build of 3.7. So pretty sizable crude and gasoline combo there, uh, in and around the 5 million mark just bumping crude oil prices down from where we were trading just shy of a 61 handle yesterday back a bit of a pullback of 50 cents or so so that's setting us up for the data we'll get later on today um, final thing actually just quickly jumping back to the UK political side of things just wanted to mention this because um, literally only a, a day or so ago when I was looking at this Rebecca Long Bailey was seen as the outright favorite for the next um, Labour leader and Keir Starmer who on the night of the election was seen as the outright favourite he had dropped a third and only priced in the booking or in the betting market about 12% uh, overnight though there's been a significant shift in the betting market backing Keir Starmer uh, Keir Starmer of course um, was or can potentially cause a bit of friction with the North East because he was very much a backer of a second referendum more definitively than, say, Corbyn was. Uh, however, you could say that he's a little bit more towards the centrist side of the left, which would be very different from Rebecca Long Bailey, who's very much part of the Corbynista crew. Uh, so she's come off. And the more, I'd say, centre-left candidates, Lisa Nandy's taking a bit of a bit of a pop to the upside, but Keir Starmer taking the most biggest uh, move at the moment. And it does come, you've probably seen on Twitter, let me just see if I, if I go on my Twitter account here, you can see on the, on the right-hand side things that are trending on Twitter this morning. Uh, and this, this really sums it up, actually. I didn't plan on, on seeing this. But you can see Tony Blair is the number one tweeting thing on Twitter at the moment. Now he's come out yesterday, and of course, Tony Blair being of the of New Labour, very much more centrist, saying that if this isn't the, the, the definitive sign that Labour needs to move to the centre again, then what is? But then you've got that. And then the second most trending thing on Twitter is hashtag Corbyn was right. I mean, I've not looked at these tweets yet, but I'm not sure... <laughs> I assume that they're saying that Boris is a liar because he's now threatening no deal when he said he was going to pass his deal. So, sure, I get that. But the point I was just wanting to share here is that, I mean, look how divided Labour supporters are here. You've got Tony Blair trending and then you've got Corbyn was right trending. Just goes to show the state of the opposition party at the moment. Until they get that act together and really unite behind one single direction um, then they're going to be well it's going to be a Tory rule for a while I guess uh, with the way I'd, I'd interpret that quick look at the calendar uh, UK data well before the UK data you got German IFO uh, coming up at nine o'clock and perhaps that can be interesting it's not normally massively market moving because I think people are, are generally uh, aware of the current economic state of Germany being fairly dire uh, but the forward outlook is important and if we were to get an upside surprise number I do think that the bigger reaction is is from an upside surprise rather than a downside miss if that makes sense just given how negative people currently are in terms of the behavioral view of of, of Germany at the moment uh, and people wanting to see if not is it going to get worse or are we hitting a bit of a bottom at the moment and so IFO 
being then the the main kind of survey to a large sample of actual uh, companies on the ground that could be an interesting figure so that's coming out at nine the headline reading expected at 95.5 so a slight improvement on the prior month uk cpi data coming out uh, not looking for anything really from the, those numbers um, i guess here it's more a case of at the moment the dominant theme is the pricing in of of no deal uh, from boris if we were near a, a particularly important, let's say, technical level of support, for instance, uh, it could act as a catalyst just to break a level. In itself, I don't think it's really that meaningful as a piece of economic data. So even though CPI nearly always very important, given it really, really is key to monetary policy decision making, uh, the fact that the data is expected to be largely um, no different from the prior month. We're, we're basically tracking just sub 2% in CPI year on year in the UK. Uh, and I wouldn't be really looking for too many shocks either side. Um, otherwise, we get the final Eurozone CPI, but again, final reading. So I'd, I'd say IFO more of a risk for any Euro position than, than the CPI reading. Into the US afternoon, uh, we get Canadian data at 1.30. So uh, that does inflation data move the loonie if you are looking at that currency. You've got the oil inventories from the DOE uh, coming out at 3.30. So a recap of the APIs we'll go through again and the, the setup on, on crude oil ahead of the figures. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Speakers, uh, Christine Lagarde does speak uh, in, a sh in a short while actually. So keep an eye out for any comments. But I don't think she's going to say anything. She's speaking at a welcoming address in honor of ECB's COA organized by the ECB. So... Uh, not looking for too much given the importance of her speech just given last week. Fed's Brainard, voter uh, neutral, has been slightly on the dovish side in, in recent year or so. Um, speaking at 10.15, ECB's COA does speak uh, himself at 11.15 and Fed's Evans, a leaning dove, speaking uh, later on late afternoon London time. And then finally, the Amplify quiz again happening, delivered by the one and only Sam North. That'll be at three o'clock. All right, guys, that's it. I'll pop that um, Brexit decision tree in the chat and I'll wish you a good day. Thanks very much. Hi, guys. Yeah, looking forward to uh, to the quiz. So make sure you're getting your, your revision in early doors. Ahead of that, we'll, we'll get that running around 3 o'clock. Uh, starting off here, S&P, you can see, uh, just found a bit of support. Let's bring the pivots onto this chart here. Bit of support found on on yesterday's lows, which were the pivots and uh, what a range-bound trade that would have been in uh, sort of late morning. A couple of tests of that, and we went up to the high, and uh, that 3200 still not really confirming a, a big push above that um, as of yet. Anyway, uh, the level we're trading now, I would say, is pretty significant uh, as well. Just above uh, here on the pivot, you've got quite a strong level of resistance, uh, which was good support yesterday. You can see all around. 3197 uh, so we're keeping a watch on that uh, below these levels of support here uh, 3192 I think we could we, well, I mean it's not a massive move but down to the S1 you've also got the high that we had back on the uh, the Friday that double top there uh, around that point you can see here just marked up so we're keeping a, a watch on that below where we're trading above 3197 uh, 3200 and the uh, the double top from yesterday's high uh, and then the high that we had back on Monday as well. So horizontal levels, those would be the ones I keep an eye on. Obviously, that trend line from the uh, December low still worth having on. It's, it's getting a bit steeper here. Let's get, bring that in from the, the third, like so, down to low the 10th. And we didn't quite make it on the 12th, but I'd still have it on as a bit of a guide. You know, it'd almost be like you're happy to stay uh, overall long in S&P as long as that goes through. In terms of... Uh, drivers throughout the day <coughs> sorry um, the data in the afternoon US wise isn't going to be massively market moving unless the oil numbers were incredibly out of line so uh, again trade developments uh, will be something to focus on here or uh, any other kind of risk uh, as well but for now it seems to, to be still a case of uh, overall looking for, for places to get long in this market really unless it breaks that trend line and obviously that goes for 
the Nasdaq uh, and the Dow Jones as well, both actually, you can see, very similar just above that pivot, but have some resistance here on the, the Nasdaq to keep an eye on before you would get to the, the double top on their all time highs. The Dow uh, as well, perhaps leading uh, the way, but not quite breaking through. Uh, and again, very similar in that double top all time highs from yesterday uh, and uh, Monday as well. Having a look over at the pound, obviously, come down yesterday. Uh, it was around this sort of time where we filled the gap, free, and, and that was when we were 300 pips below uh, Friday's high. Uh, we almost touched 131 uh, in early hours this morning. If we go to the, the high in the futures at uh, 135 and a half, uh, a big, big, big move uh, to the downside. Almost, I want to test my maps out here, almost 450 pips, which is incredible. Uh, have we found the bottom? That is the question. Uh, what an area. You would have to say to for people to look to get back in again. You know, if you uh, could offer people 131, which was the the low that we had on the election day, an area to get in following election win for the Conservatives. Maybe this is the the point uh, of of interest to get in. I don't know. Maybe uh, in terms of of being confident on this, uh, in terms of. A resistance point maybe where you could look to, to get in uh, you obviously the pivot is, is a long way away and uh, literally uh, from the low is 100 pips but you can see we're starting to maybe with these previous highs just get squeezed in so I would have this on just as a bit of a guide starting from 430 yesterday afternoon you've got those free tests here one two three so i don't think it's the worst idea in the world to perhaps look for a long above that trend line targeting towards the uh, the pivot here in the futures which you know if that was to happen now from 3166 to you know the 132 handle and a bit above not a bad little place to to get in above there obviously you can have a lot of the previous support levels to keep an eye on so there would be a lot of resistance uh, in terms of a bigger move to the downside if the the low that we had 131 uh, and the, the low of the 12th goes, then, you know, again, a, a bigger move, perhaps down towards some of the highs that we had on the, the top of the 3rd or uh, even the, the high of the 18th of November uh, could be points of, of interest to, for this market to go to. Uh, yesterday as well, obviously, the euro did drift down uh, a touch into the back end of the, the session, and that continued this morning after a decent start uh, to the day. We came up to test some interesting resistance uh, and actually broke through and you could be forgiven for thinking maybe the euro is going to extend here but not quite um, and we were saying yesterday and so we put this on the the 240 about having those trend lines on from the lows just because it's been the same pattern the whole year uh, for the euro in terms of you start developing these trend lines they break and suddenly you're, you're at the the low of the year again uh, in terms of what could maybe drive a break of that trend line today you've got um, Got a bit of European data out of ten, worth keeping an eye on before uh, you know the, the U.S. Uh, well, oil is not going to move it. So really, potential uh, data points. Only 10 a.m. Really going to see uh, possible move here. So watching that trend line uh, going from the low of the December to the sixth, uh, and then of course below that, then we could get a bit interesting uh, again uh, in terms of a very strong resistance uh, support point. I'd go with the. Uh, 111.83, the high of the 21st of November uh, and the 4th, 5th and 6th of December before the lows that we got on the 12th and 13th. So keep a, a watch on that. Other levels to be aware of just above where we're trading. Uh, if we were to drift up, where would the sellers want to protect? We can see some nice support from yesterday afternoon, 112.37, give or take. Uh, be keeping a, a watch on that and maybe you would be uh, happy to, to get long, more of a medium term or longer term. Uh, intraday trade if it can break above this trend line as well starting from yesterday afternoon uh, so euro is an interesting points coming up most notably you can understand why we found support on this s1 low of yesterday low of monday uh, morning as well uh, so key key level uh, definitely want that marked up gold let's have a quick look relatively range band i mean just having a look at that uh, it's, it's it's been a tricky market i would say for overall direction in recent weeks with uh, are the Fed going to be hawkish or dovish? What's the trade situation? Good comments, bad comments, and it's, it's struggling really for an overall move. Uh, and look over the last three trading days, it's done nothing. Quite range bound, so keep a watch on that. 1484 to the upside and the downside. S1 
and those lows coming in around 1478. In terms of a bigger move, 1490 would interest me for a long. Uh, if we can close the day above that, and you can see why uh, just all these lows, those highs, uh, and as you know, to the downside, if we break those, those trend lines, uh, could be a decent opportunity to get short. Uh, historically, uh, the first two months of the year, January, February, actually not too bad for gold. So maybe the opportunity, and this is something I would be looking for, is to get long above 1490 uh, if we can confirm a break above that. But intraday looking at this, uh, again, driver's not going to be too much. There's no real new headlines out. Uh, so it'd have to be something maybe more unscheduled that would really drive price action here. So for now, the range-bound trade is, is not a bad one to look at uh, and just prioritising uh, the highs from yesterday and the low from the week as well. Quick look over at oil before we finish up on uh, European equities to see what they're doing. Uh, a decent afternoon for, for oil uh, before coming down on the API and, and actually... The, the low that we made today is significant. 60.37 was the high that we had back on the 13th uh, as well. So just have that marked up. Trend lines are, are choppy, so probably not really worth having any of those on. Um, so let's narrow that down to 15 minute. Small range, uh, if we can get above the 60.58 Obviously looking for a bigger move up to, towards the previous support before that API did come out um, as well. But not too much going on and, and probably best waiting for the afternoon considering just how small that range is. And of course, as we know, oil more likely to move in the afternoon uh, anyway, let alone because of the, the DOE numbers. Quick look over at the DAX just to wrap things up. Relatively quiet uh, first 30 minutes has to be said. You can see... Uh, yesterday we had a, a decent push lower that continued all the way uh, until around 10 11 o'clock uh, we obviously filled the gap of the, the week uh, pretty quick uh, we did gap uh, overnight to the downside but we're not far away let's put this on the 15 minute from filling that on the future so certainly have this uh, marked up uh, as a point of resistance above that uh, well you know US equities could well look, look to be attacking uh, those re resistance points from yesterday and, and, uh, and get a push through. Uh, but overall, relatively quiet out there. Data uh, calendar is going to be, you know, kicking off from, in terms of the, the pound anyway, at, uh, at 9.30. Then you've got some at 10 o'clock from Europe, but final inflation numbers. So I would say relatively quiet morning. The afternoon looking quite similar. Uh, so maybe more unscheduled comments would be uh, one to, to be aware of and with the rate that Donald Trump is tweeting uh, it wouldn't be too surprising to have something uh, going on. Any questions as usual please uh, do let us know to see an oil here just tick down to its lower point of the day uh, but yeah any questions do uh, please let us know. Uh, we'll be live three o'clock UK time uh, for the quiz everyone can take part it'll be done by a Kahoot so you'll uh, all have 60 seconds to answer each question. There'll be no advantage from uh, anyone doing it in the office. So it's an equal playing field. Um, I look forward to having you all uh, join me for that. Uh, but yeah, any questions ahead of that, please do uh, let us know. I hope you all have a, a good trading day and I'll catch you all later on.